Hi there, in this video I'm going to share my thoughts on how you can go about finding a great niche for you to build a profitable micro SaaS in. So this video is the first in the detailed 10 step guide that I've got to building a profitable micro SaaS. So if you've not seen the 10 step overview video then I'll link to it in the description below and at the end of the video too. So in case you're new to the channel, my name is Rick and I escape my crappy day job by developing profitable micro SaaS apps in my spare time. And now I'm passionate about helping other software developers achieve their micro SaaS goals. There's a ton of opportunities with micro SaaS, but it can be tough to know where to start. So in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the key characteristics of a great micro SaaS niche. And if you want more details on the other steps, then you can download my free Microsoft handbook or you can buy a physical copy on Amazon. Right, let's get into it. So as the saying goes, the riches are in the niches. So finding a great micro niche is a critical building block of Microsoft. And if you get this foundational step wrong, you'll be swimming upstream in all subsequent steps. So instead of looking for large generic markets, you want to narrow down to a real micro niche with a highly targetable potential customer base for your app. The more micro you go, the better. And not only will you be able to find and engage with potential customers much more easily, but you'll be able to serve them a much better, more tailored solution. So here are the key characteristics of a great micro niche. First, specific and focused. So we don't want to target a broad market. It's much harder to stand out in a crowded market. And the way I like to think of it is in like a fishing analogy. So in big SaaS, companies are casting their nets far and wide into the ocean and trawling for hours or days to try and catch as many fish as possible. Even if some of those fish aren't really their ideal fish, they still spend time scooping them up and then throw them back in. Whereas in micro SaaS, you're fishing in a much smaller undiscovered pond that maybe not many other fishermen know about. And this small pond only has one species of fish in it. And you become an expert on that type of fish, knowing exactly what type of bait that fish loves and how to catch lots of smaller fish each and every day. So the next thing I want to talk about is the expanding, not contracting market. This may seem obvious, but it's easy to get caught up in an industry that you're passionate about or fallen into without doing the research to see if it's a good fit. Clearly, we don't want to be building apps for a niche that is in decline. And instead, we want to be targeting niches that are either stable or ideally expected to grow and hopefully significantly over the next five to 10 years. Uh, if it is an emerging market, there will be less competition and you'll be able to claim a stake of that market early on. We have to balance that approach against safer, more established niches that maybe been around forever, such as accountancy, law, and health. The first Microsoft apps that I built were some Chrome extensions for Merch by Amazon creators, which was an emerging niche. And I came across that niche whilst looking across, looking for passive income opportunities myself. The niche is made up of a load of graphic designers, entrepreneurs, and side hustlers trying to create products on Amazon um, to sell on the different product types. Every time a product sells, you get small royalty. And this uh, Merch by Amazon was initially established in 2015 and I got into it around 2017. I could actually see that the size of the community was growing just by looking at the size of Facebook groups and Reddit channels. And yeah, I could see that increase in each week. So uh, the more members were joining the groups, the bigger the community, the more new people there were. Um, you could see that there was uh, the niche was certainly up and coming and creators were also making money each time one of their products sold. So all I needed to do was to create some apps that would allow the creators to focus on what they really wanted to be doing, creating more best-selling designs and earning more royalties. So if you take a look at this Google Trends graph before showing how this niche has grown in popularity and whereabouts in the growth phase I launched my app and where I was finally able to quit my day job through my app. So that was an example of the emerging market. And then next, these users have got to have a budget for tools in that niche. So you may have spotted like a fantastic opportunity in an industry that is booming, but if the people within it don't have any money to spend, then it won't be a great opportunity for you to build a micro SaaS in. So we want to target people who have both a willingness and an ability to spend on the tools that we're offering. And ideally, we want to be targeting businesses or at least people that make money from the activity in that niche. There's no use in building a tool for a hobbyist market where people are unlikely to spend any money. And you want to be targeting people who can clearly see the value in your app 
and are willing to invest in it to help them grow their business or activity. Next, are you capable of understanding the microsas niche? You don't have to be an expert in the field, but you should at least have a general understanding of it. You need to be able to put yourself in the user's shoes and understand their needs and wants. Only by understanding the market can you create a tool that really solves a genuine problem for them. Next, what you're going to need to do is decide on whether you want to build and target for B2B or B2C. B2B customers are more likely to be repeat buyers as they often need multiple licenses for your tool. They're also likely to have a higher average lifetime value than your B2C customers. And that's because they're often in a position to make decisions about purchasing expensive tools and are likely to be the decision makers within the company. On the other hand, B2C customers can be more lucrative in the short term as they often are more willing to spend money on tools that will help them grow their, their business. However, churn is typically higher in B2C than it is in B2B as the consumers haven't jumped through all the hoops that uh, would have been necessary for a B2B sale. So ultimately you need to decide what's important to you and your objectives. Do you want to set up a B2B sales team or would you rather go self-service? Can you live with higher churn over here for easier acquisition or do you rather have lower churn but higher costs on acquisition? Next up, okay, you should like your user base. So it's likely you'll be spending a lot of time building and marketing your tool to these people. So you may as well do it in a niche with users that you might actually enjoy interacting with. It will make this journey a lot more enjoyable. So if the thought of spending time talking to a particular niche's user base makes you shudder, then you you'll be setting yourself up for a tough road ahead. In my case, the merch user base was mainly made up of graphic designers, side hustlers, and entrepreneurs, all of which were fairly laid back and loved any tools that would help accelerate the growth of their businesses. So when I'd been in the niche for a while, I noticed there was only one annual conference for the niche held in Seattle, USA. Um, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to organize um, a conference in the UK for UK and European-based merch creators, even though I'd never organized a conference before. Now hosting this conference for over 80 people was quite stressful and in the end it turned into a much bigger event than anticipated with several attendees flying in from USA and Europe as well as from UK. So um, it was really worth the effort though. I was able to uh, build relationships and establish trust and meet many Merch Wizard users, uh, get their feedback on ideas for new features and that made all the effort well worthwhile. All right, so key takeaways. Uh, we looked at the key characteristics of a microsas niche that you would be able to target the users in, and they are the niche is an expanding one. The users in that niche have a budget for tools. You have a basic understanding at least of the niche, and whether you're gonna go for B2B, or B2C, or a hybrid potentially of the two, um, and that it should be a specific and focused niche, not a generic one and that the customer base you should ideally like or at least not dislike. Okay, so that was step one in the process. And next video, which when I've filmed and uploaded it, will be identifying problems within that niche. And uh, yeah, if you've not seen this 10 step video, then I'll link to it now, and it will be linked to in the description below. Don't forget the Microsoft handbook, which again is linked in the description below, completely free download. 12 chapters, high level overview of everything you need to go to go from zero all the way through to an exit. And yeah, if you like what you see, then please uh, like, subscribe, uh, join our Facebook group. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.